Life is hectic. Some days are just a blur. We're Jay and Laura LaFoon, and we help busy couples stay married for life. Welcome to the Married for Life Podcast. Today is March 21st, and we are acknowledging two very special women in our life. Happy birthday to Shauna LaFoon. She was uh, birthed well, it's yesterday. A day la- yeah, I was going to say, it's a day later than her birthday. Happy belated birthday, Shauna LaFoon. We love you very much down there in Houston, and uh, married to our son, Tori. And then a very special uh, milestone birthday coming up on the 25th of this month. Uh, for those of you that know my mother... Um, Doyce Lafoon, it will be her 80th birthday. She'd prefer it to be her 78th, but she's it's like, her 80th. She's now going backwards. <laughs> she said, I'm not going forward anymore. I'm going backwards. But So if you're around on the 25th and you think about it, wish my mother a happy 80th birthday. How do you guys celebrate we, birthdays? We will not be here that no, day. No, we won't be here that day. But, but we will celebrate on the 26th. I just wonder how our listeners celebrate birthdays. Like, do you do special things? Like, for in our family, it's always birthday week. You get, you a, get whole a whole week. whole week. And, that, and that's mostly because... And you're supposed to get what you want for the whole week, but that never happens for me. <laughs> well, it's mostly because <laughs> when, especially celebrating Diane's birthday, our my sister-in-law, Jay's sister, our son, Tori, and mine, they all fall within one week of each other, the first week of December. And so we just kind of started early on celebrating that at Thanksgiving, which, you know, sometimes is a whole week and a half before Tori's birthday. Um, so it just kind of birthday started at thanksgiving and just went right through till the day so, so we've always had apparently a we're talking about you now no we, 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 we're having, we, i'm talking about how people celebrate sure birthdays. we were celebrating two special women i'm just giving you a hard time dear don't worry about that's it that's normal i'm just asking people how do they celebrate birthdays i was just you talking could about you how could reply to ours. this and say how you celebrate birthdays that'd be fun that would be a lot of fun well here's a shout out to a listener a good friend of ours named kathy Kathy sent us this from Facebook. It's a meme. or Is it a meme if it doesn't have a character on it? I, I don't no know. Idea. It's just words. Marriage doesn't take two people. It takes three. You cannot have a good marriage if God is not in the center of this. And then Kathy writes, I saw this on Facebook today. It reminded me of a mantra that Jeff and I got from Celebrate Your Marriage years ago. We've kept this at the heart of all we do. God first, spouse second, kids third. Now as empty nesters, we know how important living this mantra of all these years has been. Thank you for guiding us. You've made a big difference in our lives. Well, Kathy and Jeff are now celebrating retirement in, in Florida. sunny Florida. Yeah. So, yeah, they're enjoying <clears throat> that empty nest. She just retired from many years of teaching. And um, congratulations on that, Kathy. And hope you're enjoying your sunny, sunny, sunny winter down there in Florida. And, yes, Kathy and Jeff have been a part of our Celebrate Your Marriage Conference for years that we do here in Michigan in May and October and uh, so that's just really kind of a kind of, kind of fun, fun shout out from from her and back at her. Enjoy your retirement there, Miss Kathy. Well, today we're going to talk about what it means to lead in your marriage, and we want to make it very clear that leading is not gender specific, it is not role specific, it is not authority. Leading is about an attitude, and um, I really saw this in my father a number of years ago. Um, it was uh, this time of year in Michigan, and my mother slipped and fell on the ice and broke her leg between her knee and her ankle. She broke it in like 10 spots. Wow, that's been like 25 years ago because she was returning something she bought for Tori when that's he was right. like two. That's right. Yeah, that's a long time ago. But it still sticks in my mind because of what my father had to do. Um, <clears throat> my mom's leg was put in a device called a Minelli Spinelli, and it basically had all these... Uh, metal surgical pins sticking out of her leg. The doctor said that she'd be in that for six weeks. And what had to happen was every day, dad had to clean that twice a day because if infection from the outside got down on the, in those pins and got down into her bone, they would have to amputate her leg. Um, so every day he would get uh, down on his hands and knees and he would take about 45 minutes each time to clean yes, mom's leg. Yes, he was leg. very meticulous. <clears throat> very meticulous and um, didn't want anybody else to do it because he wanted to make sure it got done right. So he was going to do it. But 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes at, at night, every day. Now, the interesting thing is the bones of the lower leg are known as dumb bones. That is because they don't heal very quickly. And unfortunately for my mom and also for my dad, my mom was not in this device for six weeks. She was in it for nine long months. Nine long months, my dad, every day, on his knees morning, on his knees night, really showing us what it meant to be a leader in the family. And so we're going to we're going to take uh, that example and we're also going to take an example from scripture because we think scripture is powerful and it is beneficial for all of us. 
And we, uh, uh, we want you to understand that you, um, you can become a leader by following Christ's example given in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient. Oh, I'm saying he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now I find scripture hilarious. And you know, you might not see the humor here, but but the first part here is so fu- is so funny for me. So um, your attitude should be the same as Christ Jesus, who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Now, scripture goes on to define what being nothing is. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of man. So nothing equals man. All right, fellas, we're nothing. And uh, that's that's pretty cool. But what you can find in the scripture is, is three keys for being a leader in your home. What is it going to take? And it's not, you know, we always think of a leader as somebody who, you know, is at the top and authority. stands in authority and tells everybody what to do. But Jesus is total opposite. And so looking Don't at this... Don't you think these are attitudes? They could be attitudes. Yeah. They could be attitudes. But to be emptied, to be humbled, and to be obedient. Those are the three attitudes. Thank you for that word. That we can we can be in order to be a leader. And to be emptied, you go back to that first that Jay was just talking about. You know, made Jesus made himself nothing. He didn't Being make himself emptied, small. Right. Didn't he, make himself tiny. Nothing. We don't even understand what that means in our culture. How do we become nothing? Because we all want to be something. <laughs> we always want to be somebody. We want to be important. We want to, you know, so to be... Leave our mark. To be emptied. And I think, you know, it's kind of maybe lose your lose your selfishness. Lose that desire to be something big and great. I can remember my, my mama, who was my mother's mother, used to always say, you've got to be, be somebody. you got to be somebody. You know, so-and-so was somebody. What are you guys going to be? Are you going to be somebody? Yeah, I am. I'm Laura. So that makes me somebody. <laughs> well, I um, think I think for me... Um, trying to not be too spiritual theological here but but yet trying to really paint the picture Jesus was in heaven with God as God all powerful the universe at his command and he chose to become a what man just mm-hmm. a little speck of dust on a tiny little planet in the broad speck of scope of the universe and so that to me is how Christ became nothing. How we become nothing, I think, is a little different. So, how, yeah, how does this translate into our marriages? How does it translate into our marriage to be emptied? I think it's being a servant to serve your spouse. Um, think of your spouse first. Think of your spouse first, putting your spouse's needs above your own, um, doing those things for your spouse every day that, you know, shows your spouse that you. That they're your priority. And doing it just because. Mm -hmm. Not for any, you know, oh, I'm going to do this for you and hopefully you'll do something for me. Um, Unfortunately, that happens all too often in marriage. Um, It did in ours for a number of years. Uh, We called it tit for tat. And, um, you know, just was back and forth. Um, And it really is unhealthy for your marriage. But when you understand that that servant attitude, that, 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 that humility that comes with being a servant of becoming nothing is really quite powerful because it allows you to be open and vulnerable with your spouse. So being a leader, the first attitude is to be empty. And we come back after the break, we'll talk about being humbled and being obedient. Hey everyone, this is Paul Thomas, Director of Live Events here at Celebrate Ministries. We want to invite you to celebrate your marriage at Grand Hotel. This special conference takes place on May 19th through the 20th on Mackinac Island in northern Michigan. For over 20 years, we've invited couples to Mackinac Island, and this year, we welcome America's Got Talent finalist and sand artist Joe Castillo to the conference to join Jay and Laura LaFoon. Celebrate Your Marriage gives you and your spouse a chance to slow down, focus on each other, remember why you got married, all with the backdrop of one of the most romantic locations in America. From the moment you arrive on Mackinac Island by ferry to the horse-drawn carriages to the beautiful views and wonderful food, Celebrate Your Marriage is a wonderful weekend getaway for you and your spouse. 
The conference spans two days, but we're excited to welcome special guests Keith and Chandra Rushing of Better Half Ministries to our special VIP experience. The VIP experience includes a private dinner with the Rushings and the Lafoons on May 20th, as well as sessions on May 21st, giving you and your spouse a chance to stay one more night at Historic Grand Hotel. Now, you can find out more about Celebrate Your Marriage at Grand Hotel by visiting CelebrateYourMarriage.com. That's CelebrateYourMarriage.com. The ultimate date night, he said, she said, winter tour continues this week. Springfield and Joplin, Missouri are the destinations for Jay and Laura LaFoon. Next week, they'll be in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. And for those of you in Michigan, Jay and Laura will be in Saginaw and Sault Ste. Marie in early April. You can get tickets to an event near you. You can see the full schedule of where Jay and Laura LaFoon will be visiting by going to jayandlaura.com. Now, let's get back to Jay and Laura LaFoon. Well, welcome back. Today we're talking about being a leader. What does it mean to be a leader? And it's not about being authoritarian. It's not about gender. It's not about roles. It's about attitude. And three attitudes that we need to have in order to be a leader in our marriage is to be emptied, to be humbled, and to be obedient. So we're going to go on to being What humbled. does it mean to be humble? Well, the first thing I think of is how <laughs> God humbled you, of course. I'm not thinking about how he might have humbled me. But early on in our ministry, as we have shared before, we were in Youth for Christ when we first started a ministry together. And in Youth for Christ, you have to go to summer, or at least you used to, had to go to Summer Institute. And Doesn't was, that sound like fun? It was Summer Institute. Two weeks that we had to spend in Rockford, Rockford Illinois. Illinois. Oh my goodness. In the middle of summer, hot no air and blue blazes, no air conditioning at, was it Rockford College? Rockford or College. So anyway, part of the institute, you know, they're teaching you how to do ministry, how to raise money for ministry, how to actually run a campus life club, because that's what Youth for Christ is was at that time was youth, uh, campus life clubs, and, which and is all it, which is games and, and crowd, breakers, crowd breakers, and then do it, discussion you know, starters, how do you do, all that kind of stuff. So we were practicing a campus life game. <laughs> And we were playing a game called Out of the Pits, which is, you know, you get a group of people. About six people. About six people. And you have to lift everybody above their head and you put them down. But once you've lifted that person up and put them down, they're out of the circle. So then you're down to five people who lift up another person, put them down, and now you're down to four people. And so it goes on and on and on. Until, I don't even remember until, the point of the game. Until the strongest person lifts up probably the smallest person. And over his head and back down. So I think the point of the game then, was teamwork or something. Yeah, like that. and then then the last person has to lay down and jump up, and then they officially win. Okay, so were you the last person lifting up the smallest person, or did it just happen? Anyway, it doesn't matter when it happened. But we're lifting people above our heads, and Jay bends over to lift someone up <laughs> above his head, and um, you, you, splits you hear his sound, you, he, shorts from. Stem to you hear stern. a sound you never want to hear. And that wasn't bad. Wait, wait, because it wasn't just. It no. was. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> but it wasn't just bad that he ripped his shorts. Here was the humbling part. The man had decided that this was the day he wasn't going to wear underwear under his shorts. It was why back in the day. It was called going know. commando. Yeah, but I don't even know why you would we do that. We were going commando. So now a bunch of us only, guys had decided we were going to go so commando. So now not only are we ripped our shorts from stem to stern, <laughs> but we have no underwear on. And he has to walk across campus back to the dorm to put on different... with. You know, yeah, there, all of that, all the goodness. all my glory. Yeah, oh my word, that's, oh. that's what I think of when I think of being humbled. But not really embarrassed, but just taking your, the pride, the our pride and realizing that we don't have anything to be proud of. Well, we do, but if... Well, the scripture tells us to boast in what Jesus has right, done. Right, right. But to be humbled, um, that's really an interesting word. To to be humble is, is something that most um, of us struggle with because again our culture says go out and be something and you know you tell a story and then the, the other person has to tell a story that's even better than that story and and being humbled means being able to be number two and um, uh, my dad illustrated this when when mom's leg was broke it was all about mom it had to be if she was going to heal it was going to have to be all about her um, same thing when I had pneumonia um, it was all about me, and Laura had to run every aspect of the house, and that's a ladies. Humbling... And we know whenever the man is sick, it's always all about him. <laughs> but when mom is sick, no, we still have to be all about. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, um, it's humbling when you are are helpless. We have a good friend who um, broke his back and was told he would never walk again, and he said it's humbling when. You've got doctors and nurses, you know, lifting up your gown and, and poking and prodding 
different parts of your body. He said that's incredibly humbling, but it teaches you a lesson. Being humbled is really a good thing because it it it, it, it keeps you from getting full of yourself. So how are we humble in our marriages? That's how a, do we how do we practice humility in our marriage? I think that's the question here. I think it's very similar to being emptied. Um, we be emptied, we become nothing, and then we we serve our spouse. When we're when we're humble, we're able to serve without grumbling. Ah, there it is. There it is. There it is. When we're humble, we can serve without grumbling because we all serve our spouse from time to time. But are really, we really? You want that meal tonight? Okay, I'll make it. Right. But I'd rather make something else. Really, you can't help me with the with the laundry. <laughs> what, what you know? What's that all about? Um, so yeah, to be humble is to be able to do something without grumbling. Oh, we're smart. How about that? <laughs> so we've got be emptied, be humbled, and the third attitude that we find in that Philippians passage two five through eight is to be obedient. Be obedient. And now we're not talking about being obedient to each other. We're no, talking about well, being obedient to to the to, vows we to made. To the vows that we made. Yeah, to each other. That's true, but we also made them in front of God. Well, and I, I go back to that story about my dad. Um, the doctors told him that he had to clean mom's leg twice a day, every day. And being a firstborn, you know, rule follower, he did that, and he did that to the utmost extent. Um, some of us are... Which is why your mother walks today without a limp. Without you a limp. You would never know. You would never know, yep. Um, but the reality is, you know, some of us are not firstborn rule followers. Some of us are firstborn rebels like me. And some of us are, I don't care what you tell me to do, I'm going to do what I want to do, Laura. Because um, <laughs> she's the third of four, and she was like, hey, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Um, but being obedient to those vows... Um, this is what's really going to, to help you lead in your marriage is to remember those vows for better, for worse. So even in times of good times and bad times, you're obedient to your vows. For richer, for poor. Whether you got money or <laughs> I don't even know if it's money. You know, back to Kathy Dole retiring. Earlier we talked about her. Yeah. You know, she's young. You know, we're going to have to work till we're 80 before we can retire. <laughs> but I don't know if richer or poor necessarily means financially. I mean, I think it does. But also, are you rich your and poor in rich? your relationships? Are you? I mean, again, it's that attitude of being grateful for all that God's given you. Yep, yep. And in sickness and in health, there being you go. obedient. That, uh, that we saw in both of our parents. Yep, both of our folks. So being obedient really is coming back to those vows. And, you know, um, one of the things we talk about is when you stood at the altar, you did not make a contract. Mm -hmm. You made a covenant. Big, big difference. A contract is a legal document, and that contract can be eradicated. Um, but if, if, if you claim to be a Christ follower, then you didn't create a contract, you created a covenant. And what that means is that you made an agreement in the presence of God. That's huge. And how God plays a part of your the covenant is is God being a part of that marriage, which is what Kathy sent us from Facebook was, you know, marriage isn't about two people, it's about three. Right, you right. Know? So to lead in your in your marriage, it's not about uh, authority, it's not about gender, it's not about roles, it's about attitude. So you want to be a leader in your marriage, it's, it's very simple. Be emptied, be humbled, and be obedient. Well, thanks for being with us here today. We really appreciate you and want to hear from you. Send us uh, emails, let us know how we're impacting your marriage, and um, if you would, rate us and uh, share us, and we'll build a, a marriage community that really strives to help busy couples stay happily married for life.